for, and I hope I don't butcher this, Hoshi wo Mirohito. Yeah, uh, hi. So this is Hoshi wo Mirohito, aka Densetsu no Kusoge. And if you have no idea what that means, you're about to find out. So five, four, three, two, one, go! Okay, so after that last game where you're moving like 12 tiles a second, this one you move less than two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we made some pretty good progress there. Uh, so I made a quick safety save, and now we're on the second continent. So, <laughs> so you're probably wondering what's going on. Um, you're probably wondering if your Twitch stream is just sort of horribly corrupted and you need to refresh it. Uh, you're probably wondering who are these wonderful people on the couch. And you're probably wondering also who I am. So <laughs> I'm Do Wolf. I'm just looking fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also Mike Uyama. I am Mike Uyama. No. I am, <laughs> I am Ghost Kumo. And I'm Sharfers, and I'm in charge of the, uh, the passwords. Uh -oh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, some context as for this game. This was an RPG that was made by, like, one guy for a... So, quick interruption. Upper. We just got a random in battle. Oh, this is no. our first random battle of the fight a game, and we can't win this. So we're going to reset. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Off to a great start already. So, so, yeah. So we can win this, but I told you making it six steps was a huge thing worthy of a safety save. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. There's going to be a lot of this. What are, the chance, what are the chances of a winnable fight? Like one in eight? Uh, I don't know exactly, but my estimate is like one in four. Okay. Uh, we did have a winnable fight there. It's just it's quicker to reset because uh, any XP we get in this point of the game is useless. So... Uh, so, anyway, so sort of, so yeah, so as we were, as um, I think Ghost Kumo was saying, uh, so this game was sort of made very quickly to be a competitive dra Dragon Quest, and it failed miserably. It was made by, like, <laughs> one guy who was given a very short deadline, and it shows. Yeah, I can't, yeah. can't imagine why it wouldn't compete. Yeah, no, me neither. Anyways, so, uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm pressing, is that, uh, so as you're probably noticing, I'm moonwalking, and so when Whoa. you... Yeah, great password. Uh, so when I'm moonwalking, uh, half the game thinks I'm moving up, half the game thinks I'm moving down, and shenanigans ensue. So, so, but anyway, so, so for instance, I'm walking backwards over obstacles. When I walk backwards over obstacles, the game is checking down to see whether or not I can walk forwards, and then it's walking me up. So anyway, so we just got the Shiba, so that is the second character of our party, so we are now twice as powerful and can therefore beat the starting enemies. Uh, so this is junk, a uh, junk. It has 2 HP and gives 3 XP. So because we're unarmed right now, we're going to do 0 to 3 damage for any random number. We just dealt 3, so we just insta give. They got 3 XP out of that. We need 10 XP to hit level 1. Uh, so this is a crusher. This has, uh, let's see, it has 10 HP. Yes, 10 HP. It'll give us 12 XP. Um, it lo I swear it looks exactly like the random guy in Fist of the North Star. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so so, some, so first thing you're going to notice about this battle system is that our cursor defaults to ESP, which is awful, and I don't know why. Second thing you're going to notice is that we just took 15 damage, and our HP went from 5 to 3. That was displayed on screen above our characters in the bottom. Uh, that is because this game truncates the ones digit of our HP. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. were not a lot of RPGs around then, yeah. so they don't have the knowledge that we do yeah. now, but they got everything wrong. Yeah, so yeah. unfortunately, yeah. we're doing really, really, really bad damage rolls, so I really... Okay, we got hey. it. We got it. So listen, that beep, beep, beep told us we just hit level one, which is fantastic, because now we can jump across rivers instead of having to moonwalk. So we can make it over to this power station, and we now turn on the power. Uh, and then we can now jump back to the starting town. The starting town is about where we started off in the game. Uh, you just didn't notice it was there because it's invisible. Uh, this is not a glitch. Uh, you can talk to somebody in town, and they'll tell you that they made it invisible on purpose. I, I don't understand, but... It's game design. Game, yeah, no, this is just 101, game design 101. Make your starting town invisible, and when your player cannot figure out what direction it is in, um, you just sort of laugh at them. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, so we're right here. We're picking up a bunch of fruit off of that tree, and then we need to get to an NPC. But so we're just gonna walk, moonwalk, and that brings the NPC to us, which just is twice as fast. <laughs> I knew I knew Michael Jackson was big at this time, but I didn't know he had that much attraction to <laughs> be surprised. Yeah. So and then I just quickly open up the menu to save my jump point to be right there. 
uh, which will mean that whenever I warp to that jump point in the future, it'll just warp me right next to the healer lady, which is great, because we are going to visit her a lot. Anyways, there's supposed to be a door here, but I corrupted the graphics. Anyways, we are now in a maze. I realize it just looks like a bunch of walls that are all the same, but I swear I'm moonwalking over barriers in the maze. Uh, so anyways, notice that there's water beneath us, and now there's no longer water beneath us. So I'll explain what this is in a second, because I have to count very carefully because I am currently walking over damage tiles. So if I take literally one more step right now without changing characters like I just did, I would have died. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, but, so I need to get in that door that's just a little bit to the lower left, but there are three more encounter tiles I had to walk over if I wanted to go there normally. So instead I'm just going to set up another save warp and then uh, we just save warp there, which is so much safer. You can save about 15 seconds uh, if you just walk there instead and the world record does not do this. It is not worth. But we have made it to the third city in the game. Um, notice the skeleton guy is super happy to see we're here. This is where we're going to recruit the next character. Again, we're going to, yeah, oh boy. Um, that was, okay, we're going to bring her back up to us. And then, <laughs> so we notice here that we see that there's nothing on the left side of the screen. Now I'm going to walk back over and I'm going to moonwalk. And now there is now forest on the left side of the screen. So by moonwalking on that one tile, I've now loaded the right side of the map and put it on the left side of the map. Um, so that's just, why would you go right when you can go left? Uh, anyways, we've now recruited the third character to our party, Aine. Uh, there are four characters in this game, uh, allegedly, but I have never recruited the fourth, char the fourth character, and I probably never will. So we've just picked up four <laughs> more fruits of this type. We're now going to exit the map, which causes us to go to the default spawn for this role, which is right here. And then we're going to leave immediately and go back to the starting town, where, as you can see, we're now right next to the healer. So we're going to heal back up, and then we get to go on a grind to get to level two. So real quick. <laughs> You didn't mishear him when he said get to level one. You start at level zero. Yeah, we start at level zero <laughs> uh, because, you know, I mean, Reason. everyone knows that you start counting at zero. Like, yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's yeah. just, that's it's just, true. why would you start counting at one? That's, that's, that's just silly. So you want to, like, explain the category and why is this 2P1C? Oh, well, it's 2P1C because I am 1P and I'm using 2C. <laughs> Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for that. So, so the main, so the how we are moonwalking, uh, to probably like actually explain what's going on here, um, is that I all you have to do it's very simple. You just press up and down on your controller at the same time. So uh, this has a minor downside of being a little bit impossible. But thankfully, <laughs> uh, if you plug in the third controller in, in, into your Famicom, uh, it it basically treats it like it's exactly the same as the first controller, and therefore you can moonwalk. Um, so, so we are in a battle against a pair of crushers. Uh, so, you may have remembered earlier where I said that uh, we can't run from battles in this game. Uh, emphasis on we. Um, the enemy can run from battles just fine, and will do so if they have less than a quarter HP. So we've dealt seven damage to this guy. He has 10 HP, which is about perfect. Uh, so hopefully we'll finish off this first crusher um, in a second. If we can just get a non-zero damage roll from INA. Come on. Okay, we got it. Nice. That sounds to me like they knew that running away from battles in RPG was a thing, and they didn't ever think to give it to the player. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I got, I got nothing here. I got, I got nothing. So, so yeah, so we just got to, hopefully we'll get to 10 total damage pretty soon. Um, yeah, because this will be a ton of XP. It'll get us up to 29 XP on INA. We want to get everyone up to level 2, which is 37 XP. So that is our... Short-term goal. I really shouldn't have attacked her because if she does any damage that isn't three, he'll probably run away. But we dealt no damage, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> again, we do zero to three damage unarmed. Now, you might be wondering why we don't just buy weapons to make ourselves stronger, and that's because buying weapons makes you weaker. So once we buy... <laughs> So once we buy weapons in this game, uh, so the boys just leveled up level two. We need a little bit more for Ana. So once you buy weapons in this game, um, you uh, permanently lose deal less damage because you the enemy's defense value now applies. Uh, and the enemies have pretty good defense values. Uh, and the weapon just doesn't have nearly enough attack to overcome it. So you're just not going to deal damage. <laughs> and you cannot unequip that weapon. So uh, don't buy weapons in this game or you, uh, you have permanently ruined your save and I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you giving advice as if somebody's going to play this game? Yeah, also, you, you need, like, <laughs> 200 gold to buy the cheapest weapon, I think. Oh, my god! And to put that number in perspective, uh, we're not getting that much gold across the entire run. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> but we're going to quickly walk over here, and you're going to hear a beep in a second. 
That beep told us that we just picked up a revive item off the floor, which is a nice little safety item for the run. Um, so yeah, so again, like there is no indication that you picked up the item except for the game beeps at you. That's that's it. Okay, I say we clap for safety. Woo! Woo! So if I'm not mistaken, uh, we're gonna be seeing some of these screens a lot because I'm not exactly sure how it works, but it's something along the lines of when you leave an area, the game just kind of resets you back to the start of the yep. game. So, well, you go back whenever you leave an area, uh, you go back to the default spawn for that world. And the default spawn for the first world is right where we start the game, but we're in a town. Uh, so we're in the second town now. Uh, the plot for this town is that everyone is sick and we need to make medicine to cure them. But the medicine to cure them requires us to get some fruit off of the trees. It's like, it requires us to get past like 10 encounter squares and that's just way too dangerous. So unfortunately, they're just going to have to deal with the GDQ flu, like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we picked up our last set of berries. Uh, we need one more encounter, I think, for I need to hit low. Yeah, we are at 34. 4 XP if I counted correctly on INA. She needs 37. The weakest enemy will give us 3 XP. So we just need one more encounter. Ah, oh, we've met our Salamando, a.k.a. the jerk bird. Now you might be thinking, wait a second, Salamander, that's not a bird. But look, at he's a bird. And he is a complete jerk. Because first of all, he has 4 HP, which means he can run away. But we did kill him. And second of all, he is the first enemy in the game that can use the Karyu ability. Oh, no. And so what Karyu is, is a <laughs> permanent, uncurable paralysis poison um, that will last... Again, it's uncurable, will last after battle two, uh, and it will just ruin your day because... Did you say permanent? It is very permanent. So once you get it, you lose all of your turns to that character forever. You cannot run away. You do, if everybody is hit by the status, you do not game over. You have to wait for the enemies to kill you, which can take a while. Um, Again, and if you get out of battle, you just start taking damage on every step, and you just desperately rush the healer <laughs> woman. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so right now we are making potions. We are making the fret potion first. So what the fret potion does is it deals 10 to 25 damage to any robotic-type enemies. Or, yeah, so that is a ton of damage. Uh, so we made four of those. Um, and then we're going to pick up some more fruit because we need to make more, uh, more potions. Now, something very important to know about that menu is that it is entirely committal. We cannot back out of any menus in this game. So if I screw up and I accidentally uh, mess up that menu, um, we have to just go find... Ah, oh, ooh, that was dangerous. Um, <laughs> we have to go find more, uh, find more fruit. So what was dangerous there was that I accidentally said... So her first question the healer lady asked you when you talked to her is, do you know who I am? And if you ask, answer no to that question, she will tell you her entire life story. <laughs> and you lose, about, you lose about 20 seconds. And I <laughs> forgot that I'm doing the marathon route and that therefore I need to... Uh, so we, if I'm doing like the world record route, we would have already picked up this item. But because we're doing a marathon route, we waited until we hit level two to do this. So I need to go pick up a invisible plot critical item that is just sort of hiding out here. Uh, the fastest way to get there is to sort of go out of bounds. We're just gonna do that to go out of bounds. Um, and so we need to <laughs> so walk into this damage floor because when we're on damage floors, we don't get into encounters. So that's worth taking, being on damage floors. And then so you can just do a little bit more wound walking. Um, Wait, and then we'll just you, do one more save warp. Are you dragging the loading the loading screens to you? Here. Yeah, that's basically... So I, well, I drag the boundary of the map to me. Anyway, so that beep right there, again, only indication I picked up an item is a beep. That beep told me that I picked up the plot critical item that is required to make it to world three. Um, and again, there is no indication anywhere in this game about where it's hidden. <laughs> uh, no NPC hints at all. Uh, I don't, like if you're not just warping out of balance to that point, it's in the middle of nowhere. And yeah, I have no idea how I was supposed to find it. But now we can go to world three, which is space. 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 It's the space block, well, Yeah, we got the space block. But before <laughs> we do that, we are gonna save the game. And then I'm going to do the thing Hold that on. I forgot to do. So if you, uh, actually, I guess I need to, should do the thing that I forgot to do before we like save the game. So I'm sorry, you're gonna have to take another screenshot. That's fine. So literally, uh, I have Sharif over here on the couch who, glad, first of all, gladly donated the console that I'm playing on. And I say donate because I don't know if he's gonna want it anymore. That <laughs> it's been touched by. Hoshi. There's been, it's been, it's been a whole story. But um, <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so. We need to take, so we do have to save the game and it is passwords and the passwords are very complex in this game. So we definitely need to save them with, by just literally taking a picture of the screen. Uh, so but first we're gonna make one more potion. This is the Rotoho potion, which is basically like the ether potion in your favorite uh, Final Fantasy or Chrono Trigger or whatever. It's gonna restore 100 of the 
magic points that we are going to because uh, we're going to need to cast a lot of magic in a little bit. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> um, so again, so I'm switching characters here because each individual character has their own money supply. So if I hadn't switched characters, <laughs> we would have just run out of money. <laughs> can't deal with this game. <laughs> that is the uh, correct response. So now, now it is time to save the game. It's like every time I learn a little new thing with this game, I'm just like, oh, there we go. why Got am it? I not okay, surprised? Okay, sweet. I have to interject. I don't think anything can save this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, objectively, you're right. But here we are. So, um, so we are now in the default spawn for World 3, where we are now hunting a... Ra Ramjet, so this is not, a so it, the enemy is called a Ranja, and I am not at all certain what that is supposed to be in English. Um, so the Eng there is an English patch for this game. What the English patch uh, put it as is Ranger, which is not really what Ranja should be, but it's possible that was what they were aiming for, Miss, There's a ton of typos in this game. Um, a person in my chat wants, okay, this is exciting. So this is, this is the encounter we want. These are the, ra these are the enemies I was just talking about. So let's see if we can kill them both without dying. This is dangerous getting two of them, but it's possible we'll just win. So we just dealt minimum damage with that attack by only doing 10. That's pretty Strong. bad. Strong start. Strong start. Uh, so we're going to do another one. Uh, 14. So we're at the 24 total. Again, this can do 25, and we really want it to do 25. So let's see if what number three does. 21. Okay, so that takes us to a total of, quick maths, 45. So 45 is pretty cool, so we're just going to go the rest of the way there uh, without using the third one. Um, so again, the new 10 to 25, these guys have uh, 50 total HP, so in a perfect run, we just do 25 twice, but that's a, like a 1 in 256 chance. I did not mean to do that, so we just... So, but again, all menus are committal, so once I selected the magic menu, which is the default option, I am locked into casting a spell. Uh, <laughs> so, and you might be wondering, what happens if you don't have enough mana points to cast a spell? You lose your turn. Just, you lose your turn. Do they not understand the complexities of a B button? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as I was saying, so a person in my, in my chat once suggested that it is Ramjet, which I actually is my favorite theory, but what I like to call them is I like to call them lawn chairs. Because it's about <laughs> as, Ranja is about as close to lawn chairs as to any of the other options. Uh, so, so yeah, so we are going to finish this guy off. We've dealt about half of his HP and damage, and we did pick up a Hyper Potion at one point, which is the healing potion. Um, so if we do get a little low on HP, we'll just uh, quaff that, because that's the best word for it. Um, and, uh, but we're getting really good damage rolls here, so we should be perfectly fine. But uh, while we're finishing this off, I figure we have time for donation. You got it. We've got someone real supportive here. They say, hey, Dolwolf. Good luck on your run. Here's hoping you fail all the teleports. Thank you, Sundog, for the ten dollars. Oh, thank you so much. So yeah. So that. So <laughs> that's we actually. actually good. That's actually good. So so I didn't get a chance. So tell. Basically, oh, I didn't get a chance good. to explain this because of uh, there's so much to explain about this game, and I just interrupt myself all the time. But uh, so when you teleport in the game, it can either succeed or fail. Now, if it fails, you're immediately ejected from the battle, and you get sent to the default spawn for the world you're on. So that's what we want. Uh, if you, the teleport succeeds, only the ter character you target gets out of the battle. So that's a lot worse. So we want all of our teleports to fail. Now, how teleport works <laughs> is please sit down, because this, this is very complicated. I can't, no, don't. <laughs> Wait, no, go, don't? Go for it. Okay. Um, well, so first, we just got 200 XP, so we now have enough XP to hit level 4. We can only gain one level up at a time, so we are only level 3 right now, but the next battle will get us level 4. Uh, so anyway, so in the meantime, so teleporting. So... Uh, so basically, it picks one of the four enemy locations on the top of the screen. Uh, so, and if that place is not occupied, the teleport succeeds automatically. But if it is not occupied, then the game says, okay, what power level did you use for spell? All spells can be powered from level one to level four. And that gives you an HP value. If the enemy in that slot's HP is less than uh, that, num that a certain value times the power level of the, of the teleport spell that you used, um, you will... Uh, 16 and teleport, otherwise you fail. So, again, we want to fail. So, however, one extra caveat is that if you successfully escape from a battle, the enemy slot that you escaped from uh, does not clear. So, uh, so, if, so we can slowly fill that up and um, for the purpose of teleporting, it's not clear. So we can slowly fill that up and then whenever we're trying to escape, we just have better and better chances of failing. And again, we want to fail every single teleport, because that gets us out literally three times faster. <laughs> I'm curious, but, uh, how many fails did you get in your, uh, in your PV? 
Um, so, my PB, I think, got like first try double robot. Oh, by the way, we need to actually save the game again because uh, we got are now level four. So, if you could do that real nice and quick. There we go. Okay. Um, so, I, got, I think I got like first try double robots and then like second try sleeper and then third try sec other sleeper. So, I only had to sleep like three times. It was fantastic. Um, but so, so now we are out of frets. Uh, so we can no longer kill uh, robots, and we can never kill this guy, who is a Yuri Dames, who is just a complete jerk. Um, but hey, we immediately failed that teleport. Uh, yes, one of the things yes. this game does actually right, uh, a very rarity, is that when you fail a teleport, it'll play a different sound than if you succeed a teleport. So I just get to instantly know, and instead of having to wait for that text scroll, which is a really nice touch. Uh, this is a burst brain, which is very special enemy because. It doesn't have a typo in its name. It's just burst, b boss to know, which is b very clearly burst brain, which is really it, fat, just amazing job. So we just got put. To, so Shiba just got put to sleep. He's the guy who we're using to teleport out. So we're stuck here for a little while. Um, hopefully we'll wake up quickly. Okay, we woke up. That is very good. Uh, so Shiba being the green-haired guy and uh, what is it, Mifune? Um, uh, Minami, Minami, Minami yeah. is the guy on the left, and then Aine is the girl on the bottom right who escaped first. So all three of those teleports succeeded. Very sad. Um, I hate success. I hate success too. Yeah, <laughs> no. I mean, we're in the we're in the block to hate to success. I would say. Yeah. Fair. So so we are looking for um, either a sleeper or a white crocodile. Um, so hopefully we'll find one of those soon. Because in the meantime, every enemy on here except for the Ramjas, who we defeated earlier, can throw Karyu at us. And again, that's the thing that causes the, the um, permanent paralysis that just makes us cry. Uh, so, and we will be stuck here until uh, either we die or I hit the reset button on the console, which probably whatever's faster. We are a little bit behind on schedule. <laughs> <laughs> a little. A little. A little. Um, so I am healing up to get more, uh, more magic points because uh, we were a little low, and I do need to cast spells that beat the boss, because we learned a spell when we hit level four. That is bad air. So what bad air does is, in according to the manual, which is a thing of beauty, um, it <laughs> teleports all of the air surrounding the enemy away from it, causing it to choke. So first of all, it is... <laughs> So which, what this means in practical terms is that we can only use it on enemies that breathe. And before you ask, yes, the game keeps track of that. Um, of all the things <laughs> the, for the game Doesn't to make sure it. that it gets right, it gets right being able to breathe. Uh, <laughs> no B button, though. No B button. Um, so first of all, it does, the, it, does the, it does an HP check again on the enemy that you target with it. And if that enemy has more than four more, strictly more than four times the power level, um, so if you're using max power, if it has strictly more than 16 HP, um, it will deal 14 to 18 damage to that enemy, which is a fantastic amount of damage. Um, and if it has less than or equal to four times, it will just uh, cause them to fall unconscious, which causes them to miss a turn. But we want to deal damage. So we are going to be very careful with the amount of HP damage that we deal to the enemy, so we line it up perfectly. And also, the enemy that we're trying to use it on, the sleeper, has exactly 64 HP. So it turns out his runaway line is 16. So all lines up nicely. We just bring him down to like 17 to 19 HP. We use the one more, one last bad air to try to knock him down as low as possible, and then we just hopefully punch him before he runs away or heals himself, because he can do both. Um, <laughs> in the meantime, we are just failing to find him. But uh, so, I still haven't explained how I'm moonwalking, so we should probably go back to that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how I am moonwalking with my, with uh, the controller setup. So. So again, I can't. So the game cannot tell the difference between controller slots one and three. Um, so you might, as you might be familiar with the NES and Famicom, and know that it only has two controllers. But uh, there is an accessory for them that allows you to get up to four, which is fantastic. Because that's let's, let's do this. So um, then, beca so because the Famicom though has only the has the two built-in wired controllers by default. Um, they set it up so that if you're using a controller in the expansion port for a lot of games, it'll just or the inputs with controller one. So when you so it cannot tell the difference between controller one and controller three. So I just press up on controller one and down on controller three, and I moonwalk. So yeah, simple as that. Just first of all, get yourself a Famicom, then get yourself an, ex um, an accessory unless you have a third controller in your Famicom. And then <laughs> you're good to go. That is a lot of work for a game that has the actual nickname of the legendary you poop know game. what game. Poop legendary game. Poop, poop game. Yeah, Densetsu no Kusuge, or the Legendary Poop Game. Uh, or, you know, some other word for 
poop that yeah. I'm definitely allowed to say on stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dung. Um, so yeah, uh, so one another fun fact about this while we're trying to find the enemies we can actually kill. Uh, so a number of years ago, the developers of this game um, just released a soundtrack compilation of all of their old games. And because of that, the VGM communities uh, have the actual names of the sound of the composers for a lot of these old games, which is fantastic. Uh, for this game, the official control composer on that soundtrack is listed as question mark. Because <laughs> ain't nobody want to be associated with this game. <laughs> That's uh, my favorite fact of all of them. Yes, yeah, so, so that enemy we just ran away from there, uh, the previous one, it's a Mokshi. But uh, one of the times I was running this game, uh, Puxel was in my chat, and he just sort of writes in chat, why are you fighting a red eggplant? And cannot unsee. So that enemy is just a red eggplant to me now. Yep. Um, so yeah, so uh, this would be next on Time for the Nations, if we have any. Oh, we've got some. Uh, Tigerian? Tigerian? Thanks for the 10 bucks. Congrats on making it to the big stage, Dovold. Don't spend too much staring at the stars, <laughs> else you might start thinking success is a failure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Dan. Uh, so real quick note, what he's saying. The uh, Japanese name, Hoshio Miruhito, uh, approximately translates to stargazers. Mm -hmm. So, and I think they were staring at it a little bit too long, if I'm being honest. Could have used a little more staring, kind of fix some things. We've got a, <laughs> another donation here from someone called they go by Mike Uyama, I think. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you pronounce that. Uh, I can. Do you? How do you pronounce it? Uh, I don't know. I've, I've seen the usernames. I think it's like Meek Wu Yama. I think yeah. that might be it. Right, well, we've <laughs> got three hundred dollars from Meek Wu Yama, and uh, they say I'm living up to my promise and rounding up a bit. Twenty-eight is actually low number for butt clenches and heart attacks for super high glide. That was a great crowd, and. I kept it fabulous. Hashtag keeping it tight. Hashtag keep it awful. <laughs> yeah, so so the enemies in this area, uh, so I've seen the encounter table um, because, uh, yeah, I'm like, oh, we found one. Okay, this, so this is the white croc. This is one of the enemies we want to fight. It has 60 HP, so we're going to be very careful with our count now. So this will deal... 17 damage, so it's now down to 43. We will use Fire Arrow on it uh, from the main character, Minami. That dealt 20 damage, so it's now down to 23. Nice. If you can't read Japanese, just pay attention. Anytime you see a number separated from every other text box. <laughs> so yeah, so it's now 22. We'll spend a moment to drink some uh, mana potions on Shiba so we can cast more spells. We're at 22. Can't forget that. We're, okay, we're now at 19. That is a stop point because we can't deal any more damage or we might get a little too low. So we're at 19, 19. You don't want to deal with uh, we need. We're going to take one more rattle hole. I think we have enough PP, but I'm just going to be safe. Uh, 19, 19. So we are now going to use the one bat, a bat air for max power. So we really want to see an 18 here. We saw an 18. Okay, okay. it's one HP left. Come on, come on. Okay, that's okay. Come on, Ina, you got this. Three and four, three and four chance. You got this. Yes, Yay! Yay! we got it. That gave 500 XP, doubling the total amount of XP we've got so far. We got a level up. We are now level five. We now have in store two warp points instead of one, and we're gonna immediately heal up, and then we're gonna save the game because we do not. We wanna. We don't wanna. Again, we, there's a lot of enemies in there who can use Karyu on us, who could just immediately. Uh, Makes me have to load a save, so let's quickly save up. To give you an idea, of really, just, to give you an idea, of really, just how volatile this game is. I think record passed by like five minutes ago already. Oh yeah, so <laughs> the oh, I don't know why I did that. Uh, oh, but sometimes you do weird things when you okay, you always do weird things. Like look at so I corrupted the graphics a little bit, but it's fine. So yeah, so the world record for this game by a Japanese runner named Horan is 25 minutes what? and 56 seconds. <laughs> Uh, which is an absolutely insane time. My PB is about 26 minutes and change, and then um, what? the estimate's a little higher than that. Uh, <laughs> what can go wrong? What could go wrong? Hey, so good news. We now have an enemy in every single slot, so we now have a 100% chance to flee from battles. All right. Yeah. So how this wor how it works is when we're spawning enemies, uh, there's a 100% chance. The first enemy will always spawn in encounter slot two, which is... The second one. I'm now counting from one like a human being instead of zero like a computer. So, whoops. This game just hates the number one. It starts at zero, a slot two. 
Yeah, so yeah, so then a second one of that first enemy can then spawn in the first encounter slot, which is the, the leftmost one. Then a second type of enemy, or the same type of enemy, can spawn in slot three, and then a second one of that enemy can spawn in slot four. So the odds of getting an enemy in slot four is the lowest. But we've finally got an enemy in slot four, so now I can just very quickly immediately escape from every uh, battle without having to worry about accidentally using it on the teleport on Chiba first and having it seed. Because again, Chiba is the guy who knows the teleport spell to get us out of there. If I use teleport on him first and it succeeds, uh, we're fin we have to finish the battle or reset. Again, whatever's faster. Uh, what? Usually the latter. Usually the latter. But tel but lo unfortunately, loading saves in this game is an experience. Um, which, which if we have. It's very unlikely we'll have to load a save now, so I, I, let's go ahead and explain it now. So when you load a, so you might have noticed in our saves that we had a mixture of hiragana, katakana, English letters, numbers, and the copyright symbol. So yeah, I can't read. I can't read any of this. And it, 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 like Sideways. it's not just like only capital hiragana, for lack of a better word. We also have like the baby characters, like baby ya, baby you, baby yo. They show up. Um, if that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. That's fine. Yeah, there's um, like, is that the Finn sign? What is that? It's like, oh yeah, the yes. Fiend, Oh yeah, every password ends with Finn. Every <laughs> single one. <laughs> Finn, mm -hmm. just dead. Yeah, like the password here I'm looking at uh, contains uh, no in Hidagana, which is uh, sort of the alph alphabet, quote unquote, the font set they use for loan words. Chi in Hidagana, which is the native Japanese font, and then. Silberry is the word Q, you're looking for, but correct. yeah. Q in, uh, Q and A in Latin, and then uh, I don't know if that's a five or a Japanese ra in hiragana, but they look very similar. I don't think that's a five. <laughs> it's probably, it, I mean, there could be, is a hiragana? It's probably hiragana ra if it looks anything like a five. But both yeah. ras show up a lot in the password. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, so those of you who know Japanese have probably noticed that all text in this game is in hiragana, even the stuff that probably should be in katakana. Um, I don't know why. Like, <laughs> they even programmed it to be in the font. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> the game supports katakana because it's in the passwords, and it's just only in the passwords. I, I don't understand. I love this video game. I love that. This game. That deadline doesn't cause you to just miss all of your ASCII code, uh, well, not ASCII code, all of your shift just codes by, like, 32 or whatever the off. 64 is probably the offset. I don't actually know how the layout is for shift just at all. Nope. Um, or I guess it wouldn't be shift just, it's just be, uh, whatever, I don't know how it's done. Um, <laughs> it's the most interesting thing we've talked about so far. <laughs> Probably. And maybe like two people watching understand. Exactly. I actually oh, yeah. felt oh. like I was learning something. Hey, we incredible. found the sleeper agent. So this guy, he's a sleeper, um, which is fantastic. Because this, this guy gives, has 64 HP to start, but he gives 1,000 XP. So we start, so we just dealt 17, which means we're down, down to 46. 47. 47. Sorry, have to make sure I get the number right. So how much HP do we have now? Uh, uh over a thousand. A thousand one hundred and fifty something. And so right. forty-seven. Forty-seven. Um. Oh shoot, I'm a little low on PP. That's fine. Like how we're all dressed like sort of warriors, and there's this guy in his overalls and his pant pockets. <laughs> Forty-four. He's dressed like he's. He's dressed like he's in. An, he's from another 40, game. Yeah. Three. Forty-three. We need to help him finish his crops or something. Hey there, Traveler, what can I get you today? Ah! <laughs> it's the merchant. It's absolutely the merchant. 42. <laughs> 42. 42. 42. Yeah. Do not want to lose track. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you guys can keep on uh, doing what you're doing, but, but I am just going to keep whispering words to my, numbers to myself. 42. I love games where you have to do math all the time. 42. <laughs> 42. Come on, non-zero <laughs> damage, people. Non-zero damage. We got. We can do this. Corn's coming in. 41. <laughs> uh, 38. 38 HP left. I'll give you half. 37. I honestly lost track of the. Uh, 34. There it is. 34, 34, 31. We are over halfway there. We're doing it. 28. We have time for a donation while we count down to New Year's? Uh, no. Okay. I, I'd, I'd rather not do that right now, sorry. Fair enough. Uh, 20, 25. 23. 25. 22. Okay, almost there. 22. We're punching a farmer. 
<laughs> 21. One HP at a time. 19. Okay, we're at 19. So, okay, we want big money on the batter roll. Let's Come go. on. Let's go. Come on, baby. Come on. Okay, he's 15? got two HP left. Come on, 50-50, 50-50. We got yeah. there. Woo! He got him down. 1,000 HP, 58 gold. We leveled up, uh, so we are now level seven. Uh, so we're still not there. We've got a total of about 1,730 XP. We need 1,850-ish, I forget the exact number, to hit level nine, and level nine is our goal here. So we are gonna keep on doing a little bit more grinding. So while we're trying to find the next ex enemy, let's get some of those donations in. You got it. We've got a $100 donation from Kling's Joan, if I said that right. At last, my favorite block of games. Okay. It's a joke! No, it's not. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And here's yeah. my contribution, because cancer is no joke. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, I don't have my camera up. There we go. I have to zoom in. I got it. I have uh, to zoom uh, out. Just make sure we get that. Just two is better for them one, just in case one of them winds up being blurry. We did it. It's fantastic. OK. I feel really good about that. Yeah, so this is, yeah, so we, yeah, so we get, so uh, so, again, um, you might have noticed that despite how ugly most of this game is, they actually, so at least I really like the battle sprites. I think they did a really good job of the battle sprites. Um, so, one really cool thing that happens is that as we level up, our characters level up, get bigger. So we are now at the young adult stage, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, so there's, again, there's three stages. I have never seen the third stage <laughs> because that requires so much grinding and... I have never beaten this game legitimate uh, without doing the speed run. Let's go with that rather word instead. Um, I know teenagehood is hard, but that's a lot of work to get to adolescence. Yeah. Um, <laughs> God. So, so for a quick uh, offshoot, so the runner who, the Japanese runner who basically did the majority of the routing for this game, so they figured out the that you can use the third controller. They figured out that you can uh, all of the cool glitches about moving, uh, loading the wrong maps, which child does Moonwalk on to do that. Basically, everything in this route that's cool, uh, Shaldiff came up with. Um, so that, uh, so huge shout outs to him. Uh, I, okay, so we're gonna, anyways, we're gonna fight this enemy. Uh, so this enemy has 62 HP. Um, so we, unfortunately, it can heal itself if we get really unlucky, but we're gonna try to fight it anyways. Um, hopefully we'll get lucky. So we dealt 18, so that belt giving us to 44. Oh, we've now learned Fire Psycho, so we're going to use that. 44. Ooh, this... 44. 29. Okay, so we're, as, long as, they don't, as long as it doesn't heal itself, we're good. 27? It just healed itself. Oh, wait, no, it didn't. <laughs> it, used, it used a different attack. So it used an attack that cuts our HP in half. I just assumed because it was long text that it was, but then I actually read it. Um, so it's 27. 26? Uh, 25. I love okay, this game okay. So much. Um, 23, 20, we need one more damaging attack. Okay, that's, that, that was almost a, okay, uh, it just healed itself, so we're gonna run away now because we no longer have enough, uh, mana left to kill it again. I, I'm just using a different word to, for them, <laughs> for that stat every single time. Um, but speaking of stats, uh, so we have, uh, so... There's, we have HP and we have PP, just to use another word. Um, <laughs> and uh, so they obviously increase on level, but, we, but did you know we have other stats? So we have... Uh, we do? Yeah, I know. I, it surprised me too. So we have, we have the uh, defense stat, which theoretically decreases the amount of damage you take. But it, um, the amount of damage you take scales so... Well, the, it just scales so poorly that it's basically unnoticeable, having a higher defense stat. We have the skill stat, which bolt, which increases damage dealt by guns. But as we discussed earlier, guns buying a gun just permanently decreases your damage output. So that stat's useless. Um, and then we have speed. So something that I forgot to explain, uh, because there's just so much to explain in this game somehow, um, is that at the beginning of every battle, I'm actually picking the turn order for my characters. And then all of my characters go, and then all the enemy characters go. So speed does literally nothing. <laughs> um, so, so we have effectively useless, effectively useless, and literally useless as our non-HP and, and PP stats. So, and again, so our HP at this point in the game is literally 20, about 2,500. 
Um, and again, the most any enemy in this game deals to you is about 100. So we can take 25 of the most powerful hits in the game. Uh, but we have so much HP, potentially, we can you can get a fifth digit of HP, so they just had to truncate the ones digit on our HP counter. So it's just only displaying 245. If only there was a better way. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, there just I mean, there just isn't. Like that's just that's just an NES game. We just have to accept this. So Matt, what are the odds of getting a favorable encounter here? So including the Dona, which is the doll thing, and I have no idea why it's called a Dona. Literally no idea. Um, it, uh, it's about 3 and 16. And by about, I mean, so, yeah, no, it's just 3 and 16. Yeah, it's 3 and 16 of getting a favorable encounter. I guess there is a chance of us getting two donors, and if we got two donors, we would run for that 100% of the time, but that's, that's, I don't actually know how much that decreases the odds by. It's a pretty small amount. Some number. Um, so what was I in the middle of explaining that got interrupted at one point? So the password system. So again, so the passwords are super long. Um, they and they have 120 something odd different bit characters that we can input into them. Um, so you scroll that through them one at a time. Uh, but first, we're going to finish off this last enemy that we need to kill. Uh, so this again has 60 HP. So we're going to quickly hit it with some bad air. Uh, so it is now down to 44. We're going to hit it with a fire psycho. 44. Oh, that was an awful roll. 32. Um, 30. Okay, so we're just going to do normal attacks from now, I think, just to be safe. Uh, 29. Yeah, sorry. I am never going to finish explaining anything in this game, apparently. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm pretty sure nobody could at this point. <laughs> yeah. uh, 26. But yeah, um, so I was doing an, uh, I will wait to do that until after, because that would, it'd be funny, but it's not worth it to screw that up. So 25, 22, 22, this is pretty, I like this tune. Uh, <laughs> I was just about to say, I am 20. jamming right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, 20, so we need one more damaging attack. You got this, Ina, you got this. Okay, okay, it's okay. Yes. You're gonna have the next one. We're at 20. We believe in you. Yeah, so we just gotta deal one damage. Okay, two. 18, fantastic. So we'll just defend for the next two. 18. So then, so we need to use one last bad air. Hopefully we'll get max damage roll. We'll just immediately take out the white croc. Show me an 18. Show me an 18. 16, okay, two more, two more, Too two bad. more. 50-50 chance. You got this, Minami. Okay, still a 50-50 chance. You got this, Aine. You got this. You got this. Yeah! Woo! Fantastic. We just got another 508 XP. We now have 2,000 XP, which means I think we're level 8? No, we're 9. Yeah, we are level 9, which means we are high enough to beat the game. But first, we're going to heal up um, because there's some damage floors on the way there, and uh, we don't want to die on the damage floors, uh, which... For a time, the world record of this game actually had a character die on the damage floors in this final town area that we're walking to. Um, so, but yeah, so the reason why I went into semi-serious time, like not actual serious, but like I did it, I stopped talking while I was counting is because when I was doing this run at RPG Limit Break, uh, I did sort of a super like uh, fun with it, just sort of did like what you would do, what, um, like what an auctioneer would do for the HP values. And I screwed up the HP values and wound up having to reset. So I did not want to do that again. And but, the Hoshi uh, password experience is three minutes. Oh, yeah. So super long. So back to explaining how passwords work. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> Done. Um, yeah, they don't. Done. <laughs> Correct. So, but first, so we're in this area of the game. So this dungeon, they forgot to make any of these squares here have encounters. So we can just sort of walk over them willy-nilly. Also, they forgot to program in walls. So we'll just walk over them willy-nilly. What on earth? <laughs> And then here, um, they remembered encounter tiles, but they forgot to do uh, walls again. And walls cannot spawn encounters, so we're just going to walk over walls. However, after this, we have to walk over exactly one encounter tile. And the odds of getting an encounter are about one in six. I'm told, I was told it was one in eight by a person who hacked the game. I don't believe them. I'm pretty sure it's one in six. So I need all of your blessed RNGs in the chat right now. Sorry I didn't give you warning, but we got over Woo! the first one. Fantastic. But there is one more encounter tile. And if we get into an encounter, we have to run away from it. And by run away from it, I mean we have to... Unfortunately, we're going to fail. And this is like the one time in the game where we wouldn't want to fail a teleport because we have to do this walk all over again. So, hold, come on. We got to... This is the biggest butt clench of the run. Um, so we just got to make it one square over encounter tiles. Come on! 
Yeah. yeah! We made it over. So we are heading into the cockpit now, uh, where we are going to find out that this entire game has been the uh, the actual final th th stuff in this game is a bunch of orcas and dolphins. <laughs> that yep. is the correct response. <laughs> uh, person, whoever said uh, what. Um, so we have, the only way to talk to dolphins is to be level 90 use telepathy on them. So we're going to talk to this orca, and he says, by the way, you just in case you there. didn't know this, you're actually on a space colony, and we discovered this planet called Aqua that's filled with water, and therefore making it perfect for life for us. But we don't really want you guys there because you're humans and you cause wars and stuff. Um, however, Ooh. you know, maybe, yeah, so they don't, they just don't want us there on that planet with them. However, uh, we need to talk to the actual Captain Dolphin, who is sort of one last save warp away over here. We're just gonna, so we've loaded the top, bottom of the map on top by accident, that's not important. So we're just gonna do one quick save warp down to that door right down there. It's the only other way to get there is walk over like six encounter tiles in a row, and we don't want to do that. So we're just gonna make it down there, and we are now in the final area. And this is actually the cockpit. The previous area that I called the cockpit was laboratory. Apologies. Um, so we're going to save a jump point here so we can get back here quickly. We're going to save it right there. Yeah. Um, and walk up and we're going to use telepathy. Uh, again, we need to be level 9 to use telepathy. Anyway, so he sh this dolphin says, I am the leader. I must talk with the representative of your people. Find somebody else to f decide who's the representative of your people and then come back to me. And we're like, Dude, come on, just just pick one of us. It's going to be one of us. I know how RPG is working. He's like, no, no, you gotta walk. And the exit to this world is now here. Don't worry about it. Um, so now we're gonna go back to the laboratory, and we are going to walk over to this dolphin over here, who is the ma has the magical power to name one of us a representative of the human race, despite not <laughs> being a human. <laughs> oh my god! And it says. Uh, this will be our planet now. You have two choices. Either come with us, just use psychics, but we'll leave the humans behind and we can try to live in peace. Or you can remain here on the space colony and just try to live, um, uh, just find some other planet to live on. So, but there is a third option. We can fight and just defeat these dolphins and orcas and that will let us, um, and then we can just take the planet for ourselves. Uh, so, but this is an RPG, and what self-respect in RPG does not end with a fight, so we're going to choose that option. So let's, let's just get hyped right now for the final FOSS battle. Woo! Let's, 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 here. let's fight right, for let's human go. Time. Let's do this. Fight. We lost. Oh. They didn't finish programming the final boss battle into the game. Um, <laughs> we just automatically lost. Uh, yeah, this is the final cutscene. That is, is time, time is coming up in about two seconds now. Time. Wow. There's not even any credits. Nope. Who would want to be credited for this Nobody game? wants to be credited. So, uh, apparently Hot B. So, yeah, known for their super base pro fishing games. Or yeah, so, games. that's right. Yeah, so, unfortunately, I never, so, quickly, just going to mention the password, because I feel like I always this. Uh, when you reload the password, XP, run down to the nearest multiple of four. Gold, run down to the nearest multiple of 255. That's the most important thing to know about your uh, password system. It's great. So, quick final shout out. Shout out to Brosentia. Um, unfortunately, couldn't be here with us, as uh, Mike said in the previous run. But uh, you're with us in spirit. So, yeah, thank you for everything you did. Uh, for uh, thank you, Sharif, for again donating the console. Thank you to uh, Red um, for <laughs> rescuing everything. Uh, thank you to for PJ for cursing everything and requiring Red to rescue it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that is everything. So, uh, yeah. So take it away. Oh, well, thank you so much for that the speed run of that video game. Uh, I, for one, welcome our new orca and dolphin overlords uh, audience. If you welcome the dolphin overlords, can we get a Please. Thank you very much. We're going to play a quick Twitch ad while we set up for the next speed run, Sword of the Black Stone.
Welcome back to Awful Games Done Quick. Once again, I'm Patty. We've got Sword in the Blackstone, of the Blackstone coming up while we're getting Author Blue set up to play this uh, video game. Um, we'll read a few donations. The cartoonist donates 25 smackaroonies. I'm donating because it's a great event for a great cause. But I also need that Zelda blanket. Thank you, AGQ, for making my January awesome. I think you meant awful, but thank you very much. Nocturne donates $50. I love the awful block. It's always a blast watching bad games from silly to downright horrendous, being broken apart. Shurue donates $30. This awful block is a national treasure, an international treasure, I would argue. Thank you very much. Little Brave Fox donates $10. Hi, Double. this run is awesome. Let's get VV, VV, VV to 100%. Zig with a big ol' $100 had to donate during the awful block. Good luck to all the runners, and may the bad games be ever good. I don't know about you all, but I'm loving the Mega Man music right now. Woo. Lonely Party donates $28. I thought that said Lonely Patty, and I was... Ooh. Lonely Party donates $28. I haven't had my eyes bleed in a while. Let's get that CGA incentive. I don't think your eyes should ever bleed, but I agree about CGA. Once again, you're watching awesome, or I, I guess right now, awful games done quick. One of our amazing sponsors for this marathon is the Yeti. The Yeti creates amazing merch and apparel for video game culture. Official merch supporter of Games Done Quick events since 2011. They've been cranking out great shirts and all sorts of items for nerds, geeks, and just whoever you might want to give something just real stylish to. Over $1 million have been donated to GDQ charities between all GDQ events from the Yeti and all profits from AGDQ 2020 collection at theyeti.com goes to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. So head on over to theyeti.com, check out the GDQ collection, get some awesome swag while raising money for PCF. And this donation came in a while ago. I'm not sure if it was ever read. Uh, no comment, but Andrew Prime donates $1,000. Thank you very much, Andrew. Really appreciate that. Super generous of you. Corky Fireball with a $50 donation. Extended my holiday from work for this event. I cannot stress the amount of enjoyment my wife and I get from watching every year. I live hundreds of miles and many years from my childhood, and GDQ gives me the opportunity to visit again. Thanks for the awesome experience and for working towards an amazing cause. Thank you, Corky. Glad we could take you back to your childhood. And with that,